Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I got a fun one for you. So in this video, we are going to be launching a Laravel application from the Cloudways API. So the Cloudways API allows you to easily boot up a server that could be on DigitalOcean, that could be on AWS, that could be on Google Cloud Platform, and I think there's a few more. There's Vulture and a few other services. Uh, but you actually don't even need to have an API key for any of those other servers. All you need to have is an API key for Cloudways and your login email, and then we can easily boot up a server from an API endpoint. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video, and I'm actually going to create a Laravel app to call this API endpoint to boot up a Laravel server. So it's kind of like a Laravel inception kind of thing. Um, yeah, getting a little geeky there, but it's all good. So uh, let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I think I'm going to start off by creating a new Laravel application. And I have the Laravel installer added to my machine. So I can just CD into my sites folder. And I can say Laravel new, and I'm gonna call this project Cloudways API. Okay, so nothing too fancy here. We can now go to Cloudways dash API dot test and we have a standard Laravel application in front of us. So we just have our Laravel application. We just created it. So now we need to get our Cloudways API key. So make sure to go to cloudways.com and sign up for a free account and use the promo code devdojo for a free $50 credit on your server hosting. So let's go ahead and jump into the application. So once you log in, this is your dashboard. You have your servers your application, your team, et cetera. Uh, then we can go over here to the menu and we can click on API. And if you don't have an API key yet, it'll have a big green button say, create API key, and then you'll be here at this page. So here is our API key. And then we can see that we have the API documentation that we can click right here. And let's go ahead and just search for, wanna search for create server, and you can see it's the second option right here. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to call this API endpoint and we need to pass all these parameters. But before we can do that, we actually need to be authenticated with the Cloudways API. So to do that, we need to get an OAuth access token by using our API key. So let's go ahead and jump over to our Laravel application and add this. Okay, and then I think I'm just gonna open up my routes web.php. And this is where I'm going to add the functionality just for this use case, I think it makes more sense just to add it directly in the route, but you'll probably want to have the route go to a controller, possibly touch a few other helpers, um, but we're just gonna add it to the routes just to keep things simple. So I'm gonna remove the default route and I'm going to call this new route, get, and I'll just say create. So this is gonna be the route that we hit to then contact the API endpoint to create that server. So the first thing that we'll need to do is we need to be authenticated from the Cloudways API. So we can do that by talking to this endpoint right here. So let's save this as, we'll say OAuth endpoint, and we'll set that there. And then maybe I also want to store the API key. So let me go ahead and copy this API key and put that right in here. And we are going to use the Laravel HTTP client. So if I search for HTTP client, we can see that using this facade, we can easily make these HTTP requests with Laravel. It just makes it stupid easy. It, well, makes it fun. So let's go ahead and include this namespace above the route. And then now we can use some of these HTTP posts and we can post to a route just like this. So I can say response. I can then pass in the URL and a few parameters. So how about I go ahead and just copy this and I paste that right there. So the URL that we're going to post to is this OAuth endpoint. Okay, so let's go ahead and add that there. And let's see what we need to add here for our parameters. So we need to add the email and the API key. So simple enough. This is the email that you use to sign into your Cloudways account. So I can go ahead and add that there. And then my API key. And we had that right here. So let's see what this does. Let's go ahead and print out this response. 
just with a simple DD message. So I'm going to say response body, and I'm going to see if we get the access token here. So let's open this up and go to our application slash create. Boom, we got the access token. Okay, so now we can just do a JSON decode and we can get that access token. So let me go ahead and just store this in a variable called JSON. We'll say JSON decode. And let's go ahead and die and dump. We'll say JSON access token. And let's reload. And now we just have the access token and we can store that in a separate variable and just call this token. And there's probably a lot more checks that you'll want to do. You'll want to make sure that the access token is actually received. You want to make sure that this response gives you an OK if it gives you a 200 response or if there's something wrong with perhaps the API key or the email. But we're going to go ahead and just move along. So we have the access token and now we can access any of these endpoints in the Cloudways API. So you can see we can go here and there's so much stuff that we can do. The Cloudways bot API, authentication API, uh, we have a Git API so you can automate a Git pull, a Git clone, uh, an SSH, just so much cool stuff. So let's go back to where we were at create a server. So what we need to do is we need to access this endpoint and we need to pass the access token as the bearer token. So let me go ahead and show you first. We're going to store this as just endpoint and store that right there. And then if we look back at the HTTP client, we can see how we can pass an authentication or an access token using the HTTP client. So I'm just going to search for bearer token. And it says that we can just say HTTP colon colon with token, and then we can post to that route. So it just makes it so easy. Let's go ahead and store the response in a variable here. And we want to post to the new endpoint. And then we need to pass it a few arguments. And the arguments that we actually need are all documented right here. So we can see that we have is required for all of these right here, except for these last two, because this says only required for Amazon and GCE. And I think the cloud provider that we're going to do is DO, which is DigitalOcean. So let's go ahead and fill out each one of these. So we'll say cloud. And that is going to be DO. And how about I just copy all of these? Let's see how I can easily get that. Let's copy this and let's paste that right there. So these are all the arguments that we need to pass. So we have the cloud, the region, instance type, application, application version, server label, and project name. I think we're actually missing one. Server label and app label. Okay. And I probably need to add a comma to the end of each of these. Good enough. Okay, so now we need to find out the specific region that we want to launch the server in. So if you're ever not familiar with the arguments or what you can pass to these, you can check out the Cloudways Playground and you can get an idea of the values that you can pass. So for instance, regions, we can just click on the regions right here. We can say try it out and check this out. For DigitalOcean, it's going to give us all these regions. So we can do LON1, which is London, SFO3, which is San Francisco. Let's go ahead and stick with this one. So let's go with that. And I already know all these. So instead of me going through and looking at all of them, I'm just going to fill them in. But this is going to be a great resource. If you are not familiar with which values you can pass, you can check out the playground and you can get all the values from here. So let's go ahead and finish this info. So the instance type I want to have is the two gig instance and the application is PHP Laravel. And the version, I think the latest version that they have is 8.26.1. And the server label, this is just for us, whatever we want to call it. So I'm just gonna say my Laravel application, if I could spell application server. OK, and the same with the app label. So the app label is going to be whatever we label the application. So we'll just say my Laravel app. And then the project name, this is if you want to store your servers 
inside of a project, it really doesn't make a difference. You could call it whatever your application name is. But again, I'm just going to call this my application. So simple enough, we've done that. So we should just be able to basically die and dump the response body. And let's go ahead and see what we get with this. Okay, so let's go to our application and let's go to the create route. And we get access denied, the resource owner or authorization server denied the request. Okay, let's go ahead and see. So we have the token right here. Oh, okay, that would be why we actually need to pass the token instead of just a string of token. That would make sense. Okay, so if I reload, we now get this server ID, we get the label, so we basically get the information back about the new server that just launched. And if we go into our dashboard and we click on servers, let me go ahead and reload this. You can see just like that, we have a new server that has been launched and it is currently being built. So then we could jump over to the applications tab and we don't have anything yet until the server is a finished building. So I'm gonna go ahead and just skip ahead so you don't have to wait these whole seven minutes for the server to boot up. Okay, so after our server has finished being built, we can then go ahead and click on the server and we'll see that we have the SSH credentials right here. So we can SSH directly into our server. How about we go ahead and do that now? So I'm gonna say the username. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And I can just say SSH root, oh, actually not root, <laughs> SSH that user at the IP address. And it's going to ask us for the password so we can click to copy that. We'll paste that in there and look at that. We are logged into our server. So we can go into applications and then we can CD into that generic hash. And if we list this out, we go into our public HTML and this is our Laravel application right here in front of us. So then we can also go to the Applications tab and we can click our Laravel application and we have an application URL that we can click on and we can go here to our default Laravel application. So let's go ahead and modify something. Let's go into the, I think the Resources, Views, and we have the welcome.blade.php. Okay, maybe I want to make this a little bit bigger. And you can see I can just go down here. And they kind of just modified the default welcome screen. How about I go ahead and instead of doing this, I just go to the route file. So if I go to routes, and then I go into our web.php, can go here and just comment out this return. And then I can echo, awesome, we just deployed a Laravel app via the API. So we go ahead and write and quit, and we go here and reload the page, we're gonna see that we have that output that we just saved inside of the routes web.php. So this is a live URL that we can already use for testing, and then we can connect our real URL once we are ready to go. We also have MySQL access, a bunch of monitoring, uh, SSL certificate, and a bunch of other cool stuff. So just like that, we were able to deploy a Laravel application and a Laravel server by using the Cloudways API. That's a lot of fun to play around with, and there's a lot of cool things that you can build and a lot of integrations that you can build as well. So be sure to check out Cloudways API and I also have a post similar to this over on the Dev Dojo, so be sure to check out the devdojo.com. It should be on the home page. So uh, that's all I have for now. I hope you guys are doing great, and I hope to see you in a future video.